It's raining this evening over here at Paranormal M, but we will continue to unravel stories that defy logic. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. Keep pace with our latest enigmatic tales. We hope you're ready for a journey into the supernatural. Story number one. If my mind's been playing tricks on me, it has one twisted sense of humor. Around seven or eight years ago, I went to a get-together at a friend's. Her name was Megan. Went to her house when her parents weren't home. It was a very nice house, but you could tell it was definitely an older home. There was even a laundry chute that would go down to the basement, which was apparently somewhere Megan and her family would rarely go. She decided that we all should go down there and play with the Ouija board. Oh no. We were all for it, even though none of us have done that before. The basement was dark and unfinished. You could look in any corner of the room and see a spider web. The only thing down there was the laundry chute and a wooden table with some chairs. Megan opened up the laundry chute and pulled out the Ouija board. The box was definitely old. We even had some jokes about it. She put everything together for us to start. We kept making jokes and not one of us took it seriously. Each one of my friends took a turn trying to ask a question which none were serious about. The only one I remember was a friend asking, Are you bald? It was now my turn and my question was, are you in this room? There was no visible movement, but it felt as if there was a minimal amount of force being applied in one direction. It changed my entire demeanor, and I took my hand off of it. I had a very weird feeling, but played it off to my friends. Eventually we left, and we went our separate ways, but I still had an odd feeling for the rest of that night. This is when things started to get weird for real. When I got home, I almost immediately went to bed. I randomly woke up frightened a little after 4 a.m. I had that feeling like someone was watching me. My room at the time was in my parents' basement, which was a very open space, but very dark at night. The only light would be from the moonlight coming from the tiny basement windows that only made the middle of the room visible. The other parts of the room are as dark as you can imagine. I figured our cat made some noise and woke me up, so I just went back to sleep. The next night, the same thing happened. It's 4 a.m. and I immediately go back to bed, assuming that it was our cat again. Third night in a row, I wake up and across the room I thought I saw something move. I sat up and stared for what felt like minutes. Out of nowhere, I see something turn and walk around the corner and towards the stairs. I froze up and didn't move for probably five minutes. I convinced myself I was just tired. It was probably the cat, until I realized that he was at the end of my bed staring across the room with his eyes widened. I would continue to have this experience for three-day increments every one or two months. Two of the nights I had my only, ever, sleep paralysis experience, which wasn't a good time. My solution was to sleep upstairs on the couch, which I did for six months, and it worked. At this point, I started dating someone, and I would often visit her at her house in the middle of nowhere. She had a dog and lived with her mom and stepdad. I was with a friend, Nate, and headed to my girlfriend's house to drop off her purse. She had left it in my car earlier in the day. Nate has had conversations with me prior about the religion that they have. I think it was Wiccan, but I'm not positive. They told me that they practice daily and draw pentagrams with chalk and stuff. We pulled up to the house, and they stopped talking mid-sentence. I waited for them to say something, and they eventually said, there's something bad in that house. I questioned what they meant or what they were even talking about. I could feel it, they whispered. We dropped the purse off, and then they start explaining what it was to me. 
It looks for those who are vulnerable and feed off of negativity. It will cause you pain in many mysterious ways and it destroys lives. It will only leave if it finds something better. Is it a demon? I asked. I guess you could call it that, they answered. Months go by and I'm still with my girlfriend at the time. I started noticing her stepdad being very strange. There was a night where he kept saying, They're up to something. He took off with a loaded pistol on a motorcycle at 3.30 a.m. He's yelled at every car that passes his house because they have apparently been watching him. He busted my girlfriend's door off the hinges once and yelled, They're doing what they did in Russia. He then got on his motorcycle and drove off. There are other things that he's done that are probably too dark for me to mention on here. Just take my word for it. He's hurt many people in many and very sickening ways. My girlfriend at the time told me that he wasn't like this until I came around. I also stopped just waking in the middle of the night and I started to sleep back in my own bed. So was there really something bad? feeding off of me? I really don't know what I believe. If anything, it was some strange circumstances. Present day. My girlfriend at the time had two daughters. I currently have full custody because she kept bringing the kids over to her stepdad against court orders. Which, by the way, the most recent thing I heard is he lives in a trailer out in the woods, so people will stop watching him. Story number two. Something jiggled my doorknob. This has just happened approximately 15 minutes ago and completely freaked me out. Feeling under the weather today, I left work early, came home and took a nap on the couch. I then got up to fix some soup and watch some Netflix before taking another small nap. I get up from the couch to get a glass of water and as I'm making my way to the kitchen, I hear someone jiggling my front doorknob. My doors are locked because my mother has a tendency to swing by unannounced. My cat immediately ran to the front door to greet the visitor. As I turn the corner of the kitchen or entryway, I see a small head full of short black hair ducking out of sight of the door's window. I quickly open the door, ready to have a stern talk with the child. But no one's there. My door opens to three steps and a wide parking lot. Nowhere for anybody to hide in that small amount of time. It was literally seconds between the jiggling and me opening the door. The little head of dark hair spooked me, and now I'm hiding underneath the blankets in my bedroom. No nap for me this afternoon. Story number three, my mother's phone call with a medium. My mother called me today. She had scheduled a phone call with a well-known medium in our town. I don't believe in mediums. I believe they're masters of cold reading and extrapolation on something, one says. But I listened out of politeness and respect of my mother's beliefs without belittling her. Before I relate this story, I must tell you about my brother. He's 34 years old, five years younger than me. About two years ago, he turned his life around, studied to be an electrician and was working in that field and seemed to enjoy it. My brother is a very secretive person that keeps to himself and has a hard time opening up to us and letting us know about things in his life. I let him be. But our mother nags him constantly, worries about him too much, and sometimes he gets fed up with her about it. So it came as no surprise to me that when he reorientated his short electrician career to drive, he didn't tell her about it, to drive semis, excuse me. He feels as if she will worry even more about his financial situation and he doesn't want her to worry needlessly. 
so my father and I are the only ones to know about him being in school right now. Out of town, three hours away, to learn how to be a truck driver. My mother still thinks he works as an electrician. So back to our story. My mother tells me about her phone call with the medium. The medium has asked her to prepare semi-vague questions about naming any names. My mother's relation with them basically the least amount of info possible. The medium told my mother about a few things about her family, a lot of which was quite spot on. Me working too much and having no social life. She spoke about my mother considering gastric bypass surgery, which I've been asking her to talk to her doctor about, and a bunch of other small interesting things that could fit what you're going through as a family. But the best bit was when my mother asked her, is my son happy? The medium told her, your son is going through a career change right now. I see him driving something much bigger than a pickup truck. I see trees, a forest, and dirt roads. We live in a remote area where wood trucks haul from the local forests in the United States. She told my mother that this is where my brother would find his happiness. Now my mother still thinks he works as an electrician, but I know this is not the case. And this woman, unknown to us, being so spot on, gave me the chills. Story number four. A quick little story about my grandmother's passing. I work in a public elderly home. Death is part of our work on a daily basis. And sometimes odd things happen in this department. My grandmother, who was a resident here for the past four years, passed away peacefully Saturday morning. While she was under palliative sedation, I always asked her to send me a little sign when she passed to let me know that she made it okay to the other side. Today, as I came into work, I got a few things started for my boss and our busy upcoming week. We had a nice big coffee, and as these things tend to go, I had to use the bathroom. So off I went. All of the employee rooms here are locked with a barrel bolt that's higher up on the door so our residents can't reach and go rummage through the employees' clothes and jackets. So I unlock the bolt to go in, but before I even enter the bathroom, I hear the faucet running full force. I knock to make my presence known, but no one is answering. I step into the bathroom, but there's no one. I like to think that it was my grandma saying hi. Story number five. Shadow Man, ex-husband had the same dream as me. Pictures started falling off of the walls. These events happened in 2016, a year after we moved into our home. First event. One day I woke up yelling and screaming as I had a bad dream about a woman dressed in a striped t-shirt with dark brown hair that was banging on our apartment door with a bat, yelling and threatening to kill us. I could hear those bangings so loud with an echo in my head that I instantly woke up. Then I started telling my ex-husband the first part of the dream without any details on how the woman looked, and he said, She had stripes. She has dark hair, and she has a baseball bat. I freaked out. Then I proceeded to ask him more about this. How did he know that, even though he... I, mean, I guess he said that he had a similar dream that night. And the woman said she'd kill us both, and we couldn't hide. After this discussion, I started bringing up to him that we needed to discuss this with a priest to come to a clean sort of house. But he brushed it off and felt irritated that I insisted on the topic, so I didn't go to church to talk to the priest. Fast forward two weeks later, and we had an argument, and I decided to sleep in the living room on the couch. Our apartment has the living room and the bedroom next to each other, and the bedroom door is always opened. So I fall asleep, and all of a sudden I feel as if I'm being watched. So I open my eyes, 
and I see a black shadowy figure with red eyes bending its knees and leaning forward to approach my face. I panicked, so for five or so seconds I wasn't able to do anything, but then I started crying and calling my then-husband. As I did that, he was already coming to me and said he felt someone inside. He heard steps in the apartment minutes before I started yelling. There was no one in the room that he could see. The third event happened a few months after the previous ones, and it happened while I was alone, and he was in another city for work. It was around 1 a.m., and I decided to go to sleep, but then I heard a loud bang. I went outside the bedroom to find my picture that was on the wall on the hall of the living room floor. I placed it back where it was hanging, and again the nail and I closed the door this time to the bedroom so a few more minutes passed. And then I hear another loud banging. I was terrified and I started getting goosebumps, so I finally had the courage to open the door and look to see my picture again on the floor. But this time the frame was shattered. I left it there, went back to the bedroom and closed the door. I stayed wide awake until morning came and I called my mom crying for advice. She said I should use holy water and incense and say a prayer and go through all the rooms. So I did. Something happened for a while until another day, another few months ago, other pictures started to fall. And that was the moment when I called a priest. So he came by, said some prayers, cleaned the house. Nothing bad happened after that. Except for a thing I remembered since I was a kid. I remember my parents used to drop me at my grandmother's while they were at work. And I would usually stay with my aunt, my dad's sister, while grandma did grocery shopping and went to the church. Sometimes I would hear my aunt in the bathroom talking on three voices, summoning the devil and saying things like, Kill his family, make them sick, no one should live, my brother and his wife and his children have to die. I once told my grandma, but she didn't believe me, so I told her, you know, that she should, and I told her to fake that. Excuse me, I'm just reading this here. She didn't believe me, so I told her to fake that. Oh. I think they mean... I once told my grandma, but she didn't believe me, so I told her to fake that she left the house and to come back in 30 minutes or so quietly so she could hear herself. She did, and heard what my aunt did as well. So she started banging on the bathroom door and yelled at my aunt. My aunt got out as if nothing happened, just as she did before when me and her were alone and proceeded with her day. I guess she was into black magic because she used to tell me witches were real and sometimes she tried to talk about weird stuff. Black egg spells, witchcraft, and all that. I always interrupted her and told her that we don't discuss that sort of stuff at home, and I was afraid to hear them. This is where things get crazier. My aunt stopped doing these things for years. And all of a sudden during that time when I experienced that, my grandma would complain to my mom about my aunt starting to do those weird things in the bathroom again. My mom knew I would freak out if she just said and decided to brush it off until I called her in that morning. Mind you that this time my aunt was saying things about me and my then husband. May they both get sick and die, never see the daylight again, so on and so forth. I don't know why she did that. We had never had an argument, and she always said how much she loved me. Also, my dad had a pretty good relationship with her until these events happened, and he started to distance himself from her. Seems like a good idea. Story number six. Long Green Forearm. My brother and I started talking about some strange things we've experienced over our life tonight. And one of them in particular has been really bothering me. So, I created a Reddit account, hoping someone here can give me any insight into what they think happened, or what this could possibly be. Any explanation that would help really make any sense of it. This happened almost 20 years ago. But everyone who is present can recall this event happening. My brother and I would spend a lot of our time at my aunt's house. 
who lived just up the road from our house. We have two cousins who were close in age and had a whole house filled with toys that we could all play with, so we often spent most of our time there. I'd say more than a few strange things in general happened there, but this one in particular is just so eerie. My brother was six years old, my younger cousin was eight, and I was eleven at the time. I was with my aunt in the kitchen making dinner sometime between six and eight p.m. And that was when this happened. But I asked my brother for a detailed version of exactly what him and my cousin experienced. My brother and my cousin were in my aunt's bedroom, sitting on the floor, playing with Dragon Ball Z action figure toys, leaning against the foot of the bed. All of a sudden, my cousin screamed. My brother looked over to see why he screamed. And in the space between them, he saw a long, green, almost neon forearm and hand coming out of the hardwood floor at the foot of the bed. This thing was almost two feet in height in total. The entire thing was massive, but the hand was really large. He described it as an inhuman hand maybe about eight inches in length, and the hand opened up in front of them, fist to open hand. At this point, maybe a minute or so after my cousin's first scream, they both started screaming and jumped into the bed and underneath the covers. From my point of view, we heard them scream a few times from the kitchen, but there were four children in the house all the time. We were always screaming. My aunt stopped cooking and we went back to check if what was going on. I recall going into the room and hearing them freaking out and explain the story to us. But I thought it was a big joke and didn't pay much attention. My cousin was especially upset. And my aunt was really worried and told the two of them to play in the living room connected to the kitchen. So that way they would be within eyesight. I never really thought much of it to be honest. I remember hearing from my aunt that my cousin saw the floating mysterious arm a few more times in different places in the house, but I really thought of it as some big joke that the two of them were playing, until now when my brother and I started talking about it. He still remembers vividly what happened, can't explain it. While we were talking, I was like, did you ever look into this at all? And he laughed and said, what, like Google? So I started searching, and the only thing I could find were two posts on Reddit about it. If anyone else has experienced this, or has any idea of what it could be or what could have happened, I'd love to know. Story number seven. Was it a gnome or another entity? It has been many years, but I've never forgotten this experience. What made me remember it today, I couldn't tell you. I've had more encounters with the paranormal in my lifetime than I can even count. But this one specifically still boggles my mind. I was about five years old, 30 now. The details are still so vivid. I was living in the suburbs of Chicago. Two stories made the econ house with a big back privacy fenced in yard for what it was worth there. Nothing fancy, just comfortable. The ground floor was the garage and basement living room area with a small bathroom. This level was built against a small incline, meaning the front of the house was at ground level. However, the back was about three to four feet into the incline. Tornado Alley Protection 101. The second floor was living quarters. This means that the deck out of the kitchen was elevated roughly five feet from the ground in the backyard, stairs running parallel along the back of the porch and lattice surrounding the bottom for winter furniture storage. Seeing as it was summer, all of the furniture was actually on the porch. One day I was playing by myself in the backyard. It was gray, with no sunlight to be found but not anything I would describe as dreary. I don't actually recall if it was supposed to rain or not. I simply went outside to simply 
be outside. I hopped on a swing on my swing set. You know, basic 90s two swing and four foot slide setup. I was simply swinging and I felt a breeze. But this breeze sent a chill up my spine. I heard the lilac bushes in front of me rustle. The breeze came from behind me, but the bushes went from right to left, where the stairs to the porch were. Somewhere in these couple seconds, I stopped my momentum of swinging abruptly. Remember when you were in you know, grade school in the playground and you had your momentum but dug those heels in for that abrupt stop that jarred you in your heels, dragged your toes, and felt it in your calf? Yeah, that. I knew I couldn't scream, so I simply got up and went toward the stairs, maybe 25 feet away. Once I was halfway there, I heard this growl, unlike anything I'd ever heard before. To this day, even in movies, I stopped dead in my tracks, petrified. I knew I couldn't run around either my side of my house or anything, and truly in my gut, the front door was on the opposite side of the house, and I would have to... I'd, were run on sentence, and I would have to had unlocked two locks on the privacy fence either way if I went. It was too far for my little legs. I to this day have no idea how I could have known that at this age, so I ran up the stairs. As I was running up the stairs, I looked underneath the porch. Being a lattice was there was more than enough room for the ability to see. Why I looked, I'll never really know. It was maybe the third stare when I turned, despite being terrified, despite feeling this, what I've come to find out later in life was dark energy. I stopped and I turned. No more than five feet away from me was a small person, no more than two and a half feet tall, a male wearing black. The best I can describe, tattered clothing, I guess. I think Dobby's wear, but in black, meets mummy wrap. His face was concealed in a small portion. I can't describe all the details, but he was clothed in what I remember to be a shirt gown. And there was a headpiece. I keep trying to rattle my mind if it was a wrap or a hat, but I feel like that was a pretty minuscule detail at this point. Maybe he did have pants. Maybe it was a hat. Maybe he was even wearing shoes. I was too distracted seeing his eyes. Black. Black with a yellow tinge. It was probably all of three seconds, but it felt like a lifetime. I don't know how or why, but the next thing I knew, my feet were running up the stairs toward the house. As I was rounding the top couple of steps, I felt something try to grab my ankle. Somehow I got away, and I ran straight into the kitchen, locking the door right behind me. My mother turned around to me, crying. I told her there was something out there. Something underneath the deck. A little person, a bad person. She's scary. However, this came out to her. She told me that it was a raccoon. Nothing to be afraid of. Dad, same thing. I knew and still know it was not a raccoon. For years, I never walked down those stairs, afraid that somebody would grab my ankle. Or even played in the yard without a parent. I never even went on that deck. If I did, I was peeping through the cracks first, and there was still a parent present. I even stopped going into the basement. That looming feeling never left me any time I was near that porch. It always carried into the basement. Though that actually could have been a child's fear talking. Feeling. An indescribable sensation of darkness. But I remember it to this day with so much detail. Story number eight, Ask Reddit. I know you asked for police and firefighters and first responder responses. I just had to share this story though. I'm a cable technician for Comcast in Portland, Oregon and Vancouver, Washington area. I was working close to downtown Portland a few years ago and had a job for an installation of our products at a Roman style apartment. You know the kind. The building is square with a huge common court in the center. 
I was training a new employee, so he was riding along with me. We get to the residence and meet with the really sweet older woman, and she explained what she wanted, and then asked what we should do with her satellite equipment. Working for Comcast, I said I have no clue. <laughs> she then explained that she was originally going to have a satellite, but when the technician came to do the install, he had to run new lines to her apartment to provide her service. He went into the basement, and where her apartment is, the basement has one access that's padlocked and bolted shut. The original owner of the building had done this, and the new owner didn't know why. Anyway, the tech goes down to do work, leaving the equipment in the customer's apartment to install once all the lines are ran. Hours pass, and she heard nothing from the satellite tech. She goes to look for him. His truck is gone, his tools and the cables are all in the basement. She called the company, and she had requested service from, and was told that the technician left and refused to go back to the building. No explanation was given. That's what she was told. Now I'm there, and I notice I have to run new lines. So I take the new employee, leave my equipment. Her apartment is there, all my stuff's in there, and I proceed to the basement. Here is where I started feeling really off, and honestly a little bit scared. As she got to the door that was barred and padlocked, I had my headlamp and my Maglite Mini on hand. As I opened the door, I noticed it was pitch black, and I mean dark. My new employee refused to go in. I walked in, and first off, the creepiest thing I've ever seen was a huge boiler, like the heart of the house in the movie Monster House. Anyway, I had to go to the far side of the basement to run the cable and attach it to the overhead beams. I felt a severe apprehension of being in there, like someone was staring murder at me. The new tech left me down there taking one of the lights with him, so I started talking to myself, apologizing for being in the space, and I wouldn't be there too long. I was apologizing for shit I did when I was just five, just to apologize, and I felt that maybe that was what was needed. I was a little more than a halfway bit done. I still was apologizing when I was forcefully pushed into the wall in front of me. I finished my work, quickly backed out of the room, and when I got back out of the basement, my heart was pounding and my back started to burn. I asked Jacob to look at my back, and he saw what looked like hot spots on my back. He put his fingers up, and they matched fingertips there. They were like ten, like I was pushed. I told him what happened. I sat in the truck and quit the next day. As much as that was scary, it was the coolest thing to ever have happened to me. Story number nine. Ask Reddit. I was in my teens, attending some event where I was more or less unsupervised. I was hanging out in the venue waiting for the event to start. There was a pretty good-sized crowd, a couple thousand people, most of them in small groups. As I was waiting and people watching, I noticed this guy walking around in the crowd. No one was really looking at him, but they were getting out of his way as he walked, instead of the other way around. And as I was noticing this and thinking how odd it was, suddenly he looks over at me, then he came over, with the crowd parting around him but not paying any attention to him, and talked to me for a bit. Here's where it gets really strange. I don't really know what we talked about, but I don't really know what he looked at. I remember he was male, taller than me, no great feet, and kind of short. And I think he had dark hair, kind of longish. I think I specifically remember his hair because I was actively trying to remember something about him. So I was concentrating on what his hair looked like to see if I could even remember it. And I think he noticed somehow, because in the middle of our conversation he said something like, Don't do that. 
not in a menacing way, but just as a casual, you're being rude sort of comment. And I think we may have gone somewhere briefly, because I have a vague sense of being somewhere away from the crowd, although I don't know where, and I don't remember going anywhere with him or coming back. There's no big payoff to the story. At some point, I was just alone again. I went to the event, had a good time, and at some point after I was home, I noticed I had a pretty good-sized scratch on my arm. It didn't look like something you'd get scraping up against a nail or playing with a dog, mind you. It looked more like an incision, not long, but fairly deep. It didn't hurt unless I noticed it, and it was hard to notice it. I feel like it must have healed pretty quickly, or else I just didn't notice it healing. I had a scar for a few years, but not anymore. In my mind, the man and the scratch are linked, but I don't actually know if they are, or what, if any, there are any real things to do about it. But I've always kind of low-key wondered if I met a vampire that What was under my attic window? Story number 10. So this story is from a while back, and I'm still confused as to what had happened those couple of nights. Let me set the scene. When I was younger, my parents would send me up to Russia to visit family. I would after that spend the whole summer at the family Dhaka. D-A-C-H-A. This was deep into the woods quite a bit away from the nearest city. But the Dhaka itself was in what is best described as a small village of about 16 or so streets with two major roads between the sections. These major roads weren't paved or anything, they were just the biggest. So this was where most people would drive their cars. Then after the two major roads was miles and miles of deep Russian woods. Our Dhaka was technically one floor, but you could go up into the attic which had two small rooms. This would be where I slept. That year was one of the years when FIFA was playing. I remember this vividly because the first night I was lying in the attic listening to my extended family shout and laugh over the gameplay. Finally, after what felt like forever, the game ended and everyone went off to bed. I, however, in my infinite wisdom, decided to stay up. What was I doing? Who knows, but I was awake. That night was a hot night, unusually hot, so I had both windows open to allow a breeze to go throughout the two rooms. At some point I'd realized that I needed to use the bathroom. This was an issue, seeing as the bathroom was outside on the whole other side of the property. As I was about to get up, I had a wave of nausea hit me. Lying back down, I then noticed an odd noise. Hooves. They were distant at first, but then grew louder. While I could have easily written off the noise, none of the elk, deer, or even moose would go anywhere near the settlement. As the noise came closer, I couldn't satiate my curiosity, so I slowly inched up in my bed. As I was about to move the curtain, I had a sense of dread come over me. I was terrified of what I really had no clue. As I pondered, I realized that the sound of hooves was right under my window. They paced in a circle underneath and wouldn't leave. There was no curiosity left within me, just confusion and that continued feeling of terror. I inched my way back down in bed and lay under the thick covers as I tried to fall asleep. I stayed that way till the first sign of light, at which point the sound disappeared. I remember not if they walked away or if the sound just dissipated. Either way, it was odd. By the time everyone was up, I thought nothing of it and I just felt a strange occurrence. Then came night. Once everyone was asleep, the sound returned, and with it, the terror. By morning it was gone, and being the young teen that I was at the time, I ignored it still. The next night came again, 
under my window and paced as I lay in bed, shivering underneath the covers, listening to whatever it was, walk in circles. By morning it was gone, though. Three nights was enough for young me, and after that, instead of telling anyone, I decided to just go to sleep before everyone else. After that night, I didn't hear anything, but I cannot tell you if I, if it, rather, didn't come back, or I just didn't wake up to it. Story number 11. Encounters in Dreamland A few months after my grandfather passed in 2016, I had extremely vivid dreams about him. In these dreams, my truck had broken down at night, and I was trying to call my in-laws for help. After the cell rang a few times, I heard my grandfather's voice. I looked down at the phone in disbelief, and it was like we were FaceTiming. I'm staring at him through the phone one moment, and the next thing I know, I'm not in the truck. I found myself in something that resembled a basement apartment. My grandfather looked and sounded like himself, but visually he looked like he did in the 90s. He changes his style up every so often, but this was 90s pop for sure. I asked him if he knows that he passed away, to which he replied. Don't worry about all that. I want you to know everything's going to be all right. He kept repeating himself and then led me out of the apartment. When we walk out, it was a beautiful, never-ending field with a large tree to my left. It almost looked like a cookout, not going to lie. But there were several people standing and chatting underneath this massive tree. I only recognized my great-grandfather who passed years prior, but I was able to make out a few faces. When I woke up, I was shivering and sobbing. So good to hear his voice again. At any rate, I'm explaining it to my grandmother, and she's amazed because one of the people I described was a brother that she had that died in the early 1960s. I was born in 88. Sadly, I never had the dream again. I was speaking with my cousin the other night, and he tells me about a dream that he had. In it, my grandfather was lying in bed at the apartment that I grew up in, when my cousin started crying. He told my cousin, everything will be alright, it'll work out. Of course, it brought me to tears, but it made me feel a lot better that someone else had had an experience like mine. I would love to dream and hear him again, but I never remember my dreams. It's so irritating. Anyway, I just wanted to hear other encounters people have had in their sleep and Share my own. Story number 12. I made a spirit mad by taking the internet away. Background. I live in an apartment complex built in the 1950s, but recently renovated. L.A. County. I recently moved my computer desk from my dining area into the bedroom to make room for my girlfriend's dining set. A couple days later, I was laying on the couch watching TV before going to bed. The kitchen light randomly turned on. I didn't think much of it. I figured it was just a weird power surge. The kitchen light uses a button instead of an on-off switch. Then last Saturday night, my girlfriend and I were watching paranormal activity movies in the dark. And it turned on again. I thought it was funny timing. I turned it back off. I took my dog for a short evening walk. I came in and she just turned on again. So we turned it off. And she used the bathroom, turned on again. And at this point, I make a joke along the lines of, they're mad I took the computer away and they can't watch porn anymore. Ooh. The light turned on again. We said out loud, Okay, we get it. Please stop turning the light on. The computer and internet are in the bedroom now. The light never came on again. This is the first time anything like this has ever happened. I don't think I can believe something in this apartment was actually upset about where my computer was plugged in. But the timing with the things that we said out loud was really funny. 
might be a weird power issue affecting the light because of complexes running industrial fans like 24-7. Story number 13. Footsteps. I've never seen anything inexplicable that I can remember, but I do hear things that puzzle me. For years, I worked at a law firm in an older building. Every so often, employees, including me, would hear the sound of a woman's footsteps walking up a hallway. There was a door leading outside of the end of the hallway, toward the inner office. I say woman's footsteps because it sounded like high heels. The footsteps would fade away about halfway up the hallway, and there was never anyone there. After a while, I came up with a theory. Perhaps there was a woman who walked by the office some days and her footsteps seemed to be inside of the building even though she was outside. The building did have weird acoustics, so this seemed like a possibility. At times, the footsteps seemed to be muffled or a bit faint, so this helped bolster my theory, I thought. One morning, I was in the office alone, standing at the copier, and I realized that the door at the end of that hallway had just opened because the traffic sounds suddenly got louder. Then I heard footsteps. I rushed over to peer down the hallway. No one was there, and the door was closed. I had no explanation for this other than an oral hallucination. One other odd thing related to that same hallway. One day I was headed back to the kitchen and on my way I glanced towards the door at the end of the hallway. I saw a man wearing a brown overcoat and a muffler standing in front of the door, his arms down at his sides, just staring into the office. His face seemed blurred. Maybe I just didn't look at it closely. After that, the footsteps weren't heard, except for some on the second floor, which was also unoccupied. Lastly, a legal assistant stayed late one night and heard what sounded like a power tool, like a drill, being used in the back of the building. She thought her handyman must have been working on something, but when she checked, there was nobody there. She quickly left after that. Story number 14. Has anyone else experienced this? So this has happened a few times now. But is it paranormal or coincidence? I suppose it remains to be seen. I've only had this happen twice, and both times were as clear as someone speaking it face to face. The first experience was when I was in bed and just drifting off to sleep. This was our first night in our new house. The voice said, Happy to have you, right in my ear, and to the point that I could almost feel the breath. The second time I was worrying about a week ago when I was in deep sleep. I usually have very vivid dreams, but this particular night the only thing that I can remember was this one voice that said, 20th of the 12th car accident. As I mentioned before, I was in a deep sleep, but when it was said, something inside me screamed, remember it. The next day, and late on in the day, for that matter, it hit me that what was said, and ever since, I can't stop thinking about it. It didn't say who or what year, so I could just be a random weird dream thing. It does kind of have Final Destination vibes to it, though. My question is, has anyone ever had anything like this happen to them? And was there any truth in your own dream message? For me, always. Story number 15. Story time, weird childhood memory. I've always had this memory that was just there. A couple years back, I'm in my 30s now, I thought about it and realized that this was not a normal memory. 
I was born in Oregon. This is in the USA, and only lived there until I was three. My parents were staying with my grandparents almost all the time. I assumed to help with me. I remembered their house very well. They had a huge row of windows that gave a massive view of tall trees behind their house. They had horses that roamed, and once they even woke me to go to a family of deer that was hanging out in the middle of the night. It was snowing, just a stunning scene. Anyway, one morning, I guess I jailbroke out of my crib and found my way to that living room. In my memory, there's a teddy bear, and he's telling me all about UFOs, I assume flying ships, and how they fly, that they come watch us, and like to see us do whatever we did. I don't think I understood a lot of what he, sounded like a he, was saying. The memory's pretty fuzzy now. But we were sitting by my grandparents' old vinyl collection, and he was telling me his quote-unquote ship was like this, pointing it one out of its sleeve, one of the records, and would spin when it flew. I got the bright idea to take the vinyls and start tossing them. My dad heard the commotion and came out. He took one look at me and put his hand on his hips. He was wearing his red robe, very 90s. He put me back to bed. It was always just a normal memory until I realized a talking teddy bear was not normal. Thought y'all might enjoy. Never had an imaginary friend. My mom said I never mentioned this or anything like it to her. I found pictures of that dang red robe after my dad passed. Mom said he wore that thing for years. Story number 16. Homeless Ghost. A couple of days ago, September 12, 2023, I was in Nashville, Tennessee with my girlfriend and her son to attend a concert. Instead of paying the $75 parking fee, we found a spot that was about a 20-minute walk away from the venue. As we were getting close to the intersection of 6th Ave and Ewing, I noticed a disheveled man across the street in the parking lot to my left, walking briskly in our direction. I assumed he was homeless based on, one, his appearance, two, that the rescue mission was on the other side of the parking lot. It was just a quick glance, and I returned my gaze back to the direction we were going. A few seconds later, we reached a crosswalk. As we were waiting for a signal to cross the street, I turned to see if he was actually going to approach us, and he was nowhere to be found. I said something about it, and neither my girlfriend or her son saw the man. I described him, a squat, stoutly built guy with close-cropped dark hair with a touch of gray, a goatee with a mustache that didn't quite connect, like Orlando Bloom sported in Pirates of the Caribbean. And a few days of stubble, Meth mouth, a drab colored looking undershirt, gray camo cargo shorts, a dingy white sock scrunched down, and gray shoes with a pop of red on them. They both say the other three people I saw in the parking lot, or rather, they both say the other three people I saw in the parking lot one woman sitting in low white collar. This is written strangely. They both say the other three people I saw in the parking lot. One woman sitting on the low white cinder block wall that surrounded the lot and two other women walking along talking to each other. I know what I saw. Oh, I guess they just said that they saw just these people there. But we're not seeing the man that he was describing. But I know what I saw and there's no way that a living person could just disappear like that. Also, he couldn't have made it back to the mission in that short amount of time as he was much closer to us than he was to the mission. Story number 17, Flash of Lights. Incident 1. Me and my girlfriend were having an all-nighter, so beforehand we took a nap to have enough energy to stay awake throughout the night, because she was hearing footsteps. 
and I was wanting to experience those footsteps to see if she was lying. 2.30, the footsteps started, just as she said they would. They last for around 30 minutes. I open the door and see nothing. Confirmed ghost. Pretty rad. At around 3.50, we were playing on our phones and started the conversation. A bright flash of light lit up the room for maybe half a second, which was really weird because we were on the third story of an end of apartments where no street lights or card lights would be hitting us. We freak out a little, go to bed, and the rest is history. Incident 2 Around 30 minutes ago, we're laying down and she notices lights flashing from the top one-third of her door, which isn't possible because the only lights are extremely bright and the car lights would never hit at that, that sort of angle. And it was the same blue-esque light, just not as bright. We're both believers and she definitely sees activity often, which I never believed until she proved to me that those things were really happening. Story number 18. I know it's probably nothing, but I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched in my apartment. Okay, so for context, I used to live in a house in Arizona, I believe, to be haunted by a little girl. Late at night when my son was asleep, and wife at work, and me in my home office, I would hear a little girl giggle at me now and then. I would sometimes hear footsteps in the attic area. No room to move around as it was mostly HVAC up there, very little open space. There was also what sounded like walking in the hallway. I had to get up and make sure my son was still in bed. It always was. I actually saw her once, though. As I was working, I saw what looked like a child walk past my office door. On top of that, my son would tell my wife and I about the girl in the closet. Never caught it on camera. Did catch an orb once, but I don't personally subscribe to every orb as a ghost rhetoric. Anyway, I always felt as if something was watching me, especially in the hallway and in my office and son's room. Fast forward about a year and a half. I now live in a small apartment in Texas. I've lived in the apartment since June of 2022. At first, everything was fine. However, over the last nine months or so, I've begun to have those feelings that there's a presence in my apartment. Every now and then, when my wife is at work, son in bed, and I'm working, I feel like someone is watching me. On my nights off, I would sometimes hear noises in the hallway, tapping and even shuffling. Could be explained that my son is shifting in bed, or that the ceiling fan is shaking, but I know where the sound is coming from. The hallway itself. The eerie feelings in the hallway and my son's room have returned as well. Like I said, I know it's probably nothing, but it's eerie. I'm not scared of it, but I just can't shake the feeling that this little girl has followed us. Yes, if you're wondering, my son does still talk about a person. Not a girl anymore, just a person in his closet. I see him talking to himself sometimes while looking toward the closet itself, and even gesturing towards it. Story number 19. Seeing a pale person in my closet. This basically all started and ended when I was younger. The closet in my childhood room had no sliding doors and was very wide, but not a walk-in closet. Around the early years, I was in elementary school and I was starting to see my cousin in the closet itself. I mean, not my actual real cousin, but a kind of ghost version of them. They always had their eyes closed and they were very pale. When I say pale, I mean they looked like a white statue. Everything was white and my window being opposite of the room made the moonlight bounce off of them and made them glow. Very creepy and daunting to see when I was just a kid. 
Usually I would ignore it and just pretend that it wasn't there by hiding underneath my covers. Other times, after that, I've been staring at it for a while and it would open its eyes so quickly and stare straight into mine. I was so scared I would work up the courage and run past it out of my room and straight into my parents' room. After a while, I forced my dad to put a blanket over that part of my room and I never saw it again. I then switched rooms with my sibling as well. I guess the kind of vibe that room just got to me. Is this normal to see as a child? I did forget about it for a while, until a year or two ago. I found out something bad was happening to my cousin around the same time I was seeing their ghost in my closet. And then I couldn't stop thinking about it. Was I seeing them for a reason? Was this a way to warn me about what was happening to them? I can't really imagine that, though, because we were both kids at the time. How can I help them when I was just a kid? This has been causing a lot of guilt as well because I feel like I should have somehow known what was going on with them. Has anyone else had some kind of experience as this? Am I making up this connection? How can I stop thinking about this and stop feeling so weird about it? Fiancé's first experience in my home, and we would love to hear what others have to say about this. Here's some context first. I moved into my college house when I was 19 years old. The house was built in 1926, and I live in a pretty sketchy area. I will hear, see, feel things somewhat frequently in the home. It's an old house. I'll normally just say out loud that this is my home. I don't welcome anything negative here, whatever, whatever. And then I won't have any other experiences for a few months. I've only ever truly been scared inside the house once. I was in the bathroom getting ready for a date, and I saw and heard the doorknob of the bathroom jiggle like someone was trying to come in. I, a 25-year-old female, assumed my fiancé, a 27-year-old male, was just picking on me. I opened the door and he wasn't there. He was in his office playing on the computer. I've told my fiancé multiple times about seeing and hearing things. I very frequently get that feeling in the back of my neck like someone is in the room with me when I'm alone, or that I'm being watched. He always just laughs and never believes me. Until this morning. We were both upstairs in bed. I was asleep. He was lying awake on his phone. Both of our dogs were asleep in our bed as well. There was a loud thud at about 3.30, maybe just before it. It woke me and the dogs up. One of our dogs barked once, and the second was growling. My fiancé immediately jumped up, looked out the window, didn't see anything. He stepped out of the room and he came back in, grabbed his gun, and told me to call the cops. The look on his face when he came back in the room told me everything I needed to know. Somebody was in our house. I called the cops, we both armed ourselves, and we stayed on the line with the operator. He assists and has heard and felt someone walking around downstairs. So much so that he had me call the police, and he would never do that if he didn't genuinely think somebody was in here. It took less than five minutes for three cops to arrive, and they had us meet them on the front porch. They came through and cleared the whole house, other than the room that had the dogs in it. Nothing. Couldn't find anything that could have made the noise. All of the doors were dead bolted. Nothing downstairs was touched. Robot vacuum was stuck in the corner, but it wouldn't have made a noise that loud. And I went and checked the app, and it had shut off at 3 a.m. on the dot. We looked everywhere ourselves. Couldn't find anything or replicate the noise at all. He stood at the top of the steps and had me walk through the house. And he said it sounded exactly like when I was walking, as if I was trying to sneak through the house, coming from the living room into the dining room. We can't explain it at all. We're used to hearing bangs and stuff outside, and creaks in the house because it's old. But he said it sounded and felt exactly like someone was walking around downstairs, 
and the initial thud sounded like someone slamming on one of the doors downstairs with a vibration through the house. That makes sense. We do have cameras, and they didn't pick up any movement, unfortunately. One more thing to note. He and I had just talked on Sunday afternoon about how I'm convinced the house is haunted, and he denounced it entirely. So what are the odds that this would have happened at 3.30 a.m. the following morning, when only he is awake? <laughs>